Hey everybody, welcome to a live Q&A. Happy Monday morning. It's lovely to see you all. I'm Mike Delisio, and I'm here to answer any questions you might have. So if you have anything that you would like to know, well, mostly anything, feel free to come on into this live chat and let's, let's chat, shall we? Um, it's been a... Uh, Pretty crazy couple of uh, weeks here lately, getting uh, geared up for the end of the Kickstarter campaign. It was an amazing, amazing campaign. And, and again, um, just on a personal level, thank you to everybody who contributed to the campaign uh, and made it such a success. And I know the rest of us here at the uh, studio are very excited about that and, and are very appreciative uh, for all of the support that, uh, that you have given us. So just kind of scooting down here. I know we're early on, so it may take a little bit of time before some questions pop up, but the very first thing on here uh, that came up before we actually started the stream from Chris Musics, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, I hope I am. It says Mike of Lisio. Well, yes, technically, yes. Um, it's a, clearly an Italian name, and the the official spelling of it is that it's two words it's di and then capital l i s i o and so di is a preposition in uh italian that means of or from so as i understand it which granted is is pretty limited uh it means mike of the family name of licio so di licio uh so yeah Jose Guerrero thought it meant delicious, Mike. No, I think delis delicious in Italian, I think, is uh, delicioso, very close. And uh, you better believe I heard that in high school many, many, many times. So uh, that's all right. Uh, let's see here. Violent Frog, hey, Mike, play anything this weekend? I'm ashamed to say that I have not played anything. I did not play anything this weekend. Uh, this was um, a weekend of kind of recovery. Um, I, I didn't get anything. I did read the, the rule book for the new, I got the new Root expansion in uh, for a Kickstarter. And so I was reading the, uh, the new factions rules and I was reading the updated bots for uh, solo or cooperative play. I was reading the law of root botics, I think it was called. So I'm definitely looking forward to, to trying out those new factions. I love root and uh, so I can't wait to get into trying out some more of those factions and seeing how the new bots work. The, um, the original solo for root was fine. I was glad it was in there, but it was really, to me, just a way to learn the new factions if you were trying to figure out kind of how to play some of the factions you weren't familiar with. I thought the bot was okay for that, but this new um, updated version looks a lot more robust and it looks like it can give you a, a, a decent solo experience. So I am looking forward to that. All right, so here we go. We've got something here. Okay, hyper casual. What do you not like about suburbia? Well, I figured I might get questions like this because I came pretty hard <laughs> against it in the top 100 list. I think it was the top 100 list. Um, I want to preface it by saying I've only played Suburbia once, I believe, twice at the max. It just felt mechanical to me. Um, and which doesn't always bother me. I don't, I don't feel like I always have to have th theme in a game that is clearly more about the mechanics. And Suburbia, I think you could make an argument for it being thematic as far as, you know, this building next to this building makes sense to, to, to be better for scoring. But I, I just don't know what it was. I think I had expectations going into it that it was going to be a different type of game than it was. Uh, I kept hearing SimCity, 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 and it didn't feel like SimCity at all to me. Uh, it, it just felt like put this tile next to this tile. Uh, it felt kind of soulless. Uh, I, maybe I'll try it again. A lot of people like it, but it just didn't really do anything for me. Uh, sometimes that happens. I'm not saying it's a bad game. It's just not for me. I mean, clearly it's a well-designed game. People like it, and uh, it works for a lot of people. Even Tom. Yeah. All right. Lots of hellos. Kabuki Kid, hello. Robert Purton, hello. Uh, Mockish Brody, hello. Uh, Cameron, hello. Okay, let's see here. I'll, I'll jump back down. Okay. Um, the Anti-Appeaser asks, 
On a scale of one to 10, how was the cruise for me? Well, it was, uh, let's go, I want to leave room for growth because it was my very first cruise. And so I had nothing to compare it to. I had no frame of reference other than my many viewings of the love boat when I was a young lad. Uh, so I had nothing really to compare it to. I would say it was an 8.5. It was um, a really intense experience. I think intense is the word I would use because everything was new to me. Uh, just the logistics of getting registered for the cruise and, and getting on the cruise and figuring out how things worked. It, it was, everything was a learning curve. And then we had a, a tremendous amount of work getting that library up and running and all of the, the logistics involved with that, uh, meeting all of the amazing people. I mean, that's where it was so great, was uh, so many people came up to me and expressed appreciation for uh, what I do and were so encouraging and lovely uh, about welcoming me to the Dice Tower. I, I cannot tell you how much that meant to me. Uh, I felt very welcomed here uh, amongst the Dice Tower crew, but I have also felt so welcomed by, by you, uh, the audience, with so many uh, encouraging and kind comments, both on uh, comments and through live stream things. Uh, I can't tell you how much that meant to me. And that was really my favorite part of the cruise was getting to meet so many people for the first time uh, that uh, I've maybe encountered online. Uh, it was great. and. Being able to teach uh, Scythe to some people that I met for the first time, that was a lot of fun. It's always exciting when you can introduce your favorite game to people that have never experienced it before. I think they all enjoyed it. Uh, hopefully I didn't mess up the teach too, uh, too much. It had been a while, as odd as it sounds, as much as I like the game and as much as I've played the game, I haven't taught Scythe all that often. Uh, I usually have played it with people that know how to play it already, so I felt kind of this, this pressure to not mess up their first experience with it. And I think it went over pretty well. So um, 8.5, and I hope it's, it's uh, gonna just continue to get better. <laughs> um, I don't know where this question is coming from. Have I ever cut someone's hair while they were sleeping? No, no. I don't know that I've ever cut someone's hair, period. Um, so that's that's a that's a new one. Um, Sparkle Bear Star, did you move to Florida? What was that like? Yes, I, I'm here in Homestead, Florida, with uh, just about all of the Dice Tower crew. Um, and what was it like? Well, it was a whirlwind, and, and I'm still acclimating. I'm still kind of getting myself settled here. Everything happened relatively quickly. This this move. Generally speaking, for a move of this nature, uh, happened pretty quickly for me. Um, it's been good. It's been very good. I like the uh, area. I love the climate. It's similar. Uh, a couple of people, actually more than a couple of people, have asked me what it's been like coming down here to Florida. And it's been something that, for in some ways, is familiar to me because I was born and raised in Southern California. And uh, there's a lot of similarities with Southern uh, Florida to Southern California. And there, there's similarities culturally, there are similarities um, climate-wise. And so to some extent, there's a bit of a comfort level that I have here, more so than even in the Midwest, because that was all new to me. I had never lived in a place that had that intense of snow and ice. And um, so that was a much bigger adjustment moving to the Midwest than it has been moving to South Florida. Uh, Cameron asks, uh, have you tried Clank Legacy? I have not. Um, but boy, is it popular around here. So it's certainly possible. Legacy games are tough in that, you know, you really want to be able to devote the time to, to play it. I'd want to feel like I can follow through on it. There have been a couple of legacy games that I was not able to finish, and that always feels a little bit, uh, I always feel a little bad about that. So I've, I've gone through a legacy uh, completely in near and far. I went through Charterstone completely. I went through the Rise of Fenris uh, Scythe campaign completely. And uh, there's at least a couple others, but uh, you know, I 
barely got started in in Gloomhaven. Um, Clank Legacy, I don't think has as long of a of a scope, so I would certainly try that. All right. Dan E, tell us about your family. I noticed you have a wedding ring. I do have a wedding ring. Uh, it's not a prop. It's an actual wedding ring. Uh, yes, I am married. Uh, my wife is actually still in Indiana because uh, I won't go into the whole story, but we were in the middle of a lease. And uh, so she's finishing out the lease and is going to move down here uh, in a couple of months when that lease is up. And I have two uh, boys that are uh, wonderful and they are aged uh, 17 and 11 and uh, changing to 18 and 12 this summer. Okay, another question from Chris. Um, I do have a serious question, the most serious of questions in fact. Are you going to do more single player solo reviews and or playthroughs live? Well. I think that this is probably related. I, I, I may be making some assumptions here, Chris, but uh, I have a YouTube channel called Solo Mode Games, and I uh, used to do a regular segment on Board Game Breakfast, which was really most of my connection with Dice Tower was doing those of segments on Board Game Breakfast, the Solo Mode uh, segments. And I really put those things on hiatus because there was so much involved in getting down here, getting acclimated, a huge learning curve for what I'm doing on the video editing uh, side of my job here. A lot of that is very uh, new to me as far as the type of software and getting uh, comfortable with how things are run here. So I wanted to give myself a bit of uh, latitude in focusing my energies on my job here and that meant that I put my channel on the back burner and I put my breakfast segments on the back burner. I have not completely made up my mind on how I want to do that. Now, I do know that I'll get back to doing some stuff on breakfast. Don't know exactly what that will be yet. Uh, I personally am hoping to get some solo content here through the Dice Tower. Uh, I know Z has done some solo playthroughs. I'd be happy to do solo playthroughs. Uh, I live playthroughs on the channel. Uh, I'm sure that I'll be doing some uh, solo reviews here for the Dice Tower. It's just I wanted to give myself a bit of time uh, to get myself up to speed on everything else before I devoted more time and energy to that. But uh, I am not done doing solo content by any means. Um, I'm happy to be part of the solo community, uh, although I do play a lot of multiplayer games too. Kabuki Kid, best and worst things about being in Florida. It's hard for me to say. I've only been here a, a couple of months, but I, I think just on the top of my head, best things are weather, clearly. Uh, Cuban food. Uh, I, I have really, really enjoyed the Cuban bakeries. Uh, maybe too much have I enjoyed the Cuban bakeries. I'm going to have to back away from the flan cheesecake a little bit. It's dangerous. And the... Tres leches and the cuatro leches, uh, which are maybe some of the best things on the planet. So uh, that would be the thing. The worst thing about Florida, uh, I would say maybe tolls. Not thrilled with toll roads. Uh, you can avoid them apparently, but it, really you, you kind of have to deal with them. And uh, I did find a very, very, very large bug in my shower one morning. And uh, that, that wasn't cool. I, that, I didn't. I didn't need that early on a, on a whatever morning it was. All right. Um, hmm. Mentat one two three one. What would you say your favorite Euros set in space are? I was underwhelmed by Black Angel, but I adore Gaia Project. Now I took this question without having an answer because I'm trying to think of Euros set in space that I have played. Um, I haven't played Black Angel yet, I have it, uh, and I'd like to play it, but I have not played it yet. Maybe Z will teach me. Uh, Gaia Project I also haven't played. Um, if I'm, oh, I haven't played a lot of Euro games based in space. I've played Pulsar, whatever the number is, 2048 maybe, and that was okay. It was okay. It was certainly not my favorite uh, Vladimir Suchi game, uh, but it was okay. I'm struggling to think of other Euro games based in space. I didn't really like Eclipse all that much. It was okay. Um, I was told I would really like Zaya because I like Pick Up and Deliver. Um, I don't know if you'd call that a Euro. It's kind of a sandboxy game from what I understand. It may be on more the thematic end of things, but I still need to try it. 
Um, oh, I'm, I'm hoping I don't mess up the name here. Horaya Vasleaf, maybe, hopefully, <laughs> close in the ballpark. Why wasn't Terraforming Mars in your top 40? I ask since I appreciate your style of games. Well, that's a, that's a good question. Um, Terraforming Mars would be in my top 100, I would venture to say. Um, at least close, if not in the top 100. That was a game that, when it first came out, I really, really liked it. Um, played it a bunch, both solo, but mostly multiplayer, uh, and I really, really did enjoy it. However, this is a weird thing where I feel like, and this is probably a me thing rather than a game thing, so much content has come out so quickly that I feel almost overwhelmed and it's made me less interested in playing the game. It's like, okay, there's what, five, six expansions now? Um, and I keep hearing that you shouldn't even play the games without some of them, and I've really only played the base game. I don't know. Uh, I would certainly play it again. I hope to play it again. I like it. Um, but I also want to play with a very specific uh, style of group. That's a game that can get really, really bogged down with analysis paralysis. And I like playing it with people who are pretty quick and snappy and aren't trying to min-max every turn. Uh, and I've had a couple of bad experiences playing it the last few times I played it with people that were really, and, and this is nothing against them at all, it's just, it, it kind of wears on me when, when the turns are taking a really long time because people are pouring over every card. Okay, let's see here. Sorry, every so often it jumps. So I, I wanna make sure I'm getting back and not missing too many things here. Wow, we've got a lot of, a lot of great stuff. Um, Gil asks, how hard was it to make a top list? Well, um, not too difficult. I had made a list relatively recently for my podcast, uh, Sporadically Bored, and the <laughs> maybe very recently, uh, and, and my list changed from that one quite a bit because uh, I, I put a little bit more thought and effort into the list for the Dice Tower, sorry Dan, um, than I did for that because that was more a little bit one-off and we were just gonna kinda have some fun talking about it. I did put a bit more thought into this one. I wanted to make sure that I was I'm a cult of the new player, uh, unashamedly a cult of the new player, but I did want to make sure that I was not putting too much weight on games that are exciting for me right now because they're new and making sure that I showed appreciation for the games that keep coming back to the table. I also probably put a fair amount of weight on games that I have loved exposing other people to that maybe they don't know about as much, like Radis and, and Cinque Terre. Um, games that I have really, really liked and have been able to, you know, present people to that hadn't heard about it before. So it wasn't terribly difficult uh, to do. I really enjoyed doing it and I loved doing the lists. Those were so much fun. Uh, okay. Um, Dries, do you have a favorite Lacerda game? I have not played all the Lacerda games. Uh, of those, I think I probably like CO2 the best. I haven't played the new uh, edition of CO2. Uh, I'd like to play the new edition of CO2. And then that would be followed by the Gallerist. I like the Gallerist quite a bit. Uh, I did not have a great experience with Lisboa. I almost feel like I need to play it again because that, again, was a game where I felt overwhelmed and um, I just, I don't know, the, the, the huge player aid that felt like it was larger than a rule book. Uh, it felt very obtuse to me. Everyone, it seemed like I was the only one at the table that felt like it was not thematically integrated the rules uh, everyone else was like oh this is so thematic and I was like well what game are you playing because this does not feel thematic to me at all uh, and so it made me think that maybe it was my issue because I was one of four people at the table and everyone else seemed to think it was very thematic and I did not uh, so probably CO2 then uh, Gallerist then Lisboa um, I have not played on Mars not played Kanban I'm sure there are others. Oh, I haven't played Escape Plan. I do want to play Escape Plan, actually. 
Zachary asks, who would you say is your comedic inspiration? Um, apparently they, they, they like my humor. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate that. I, boy, there's, that's a tough one. There's a lot of comedians that, that I really, I think Steve Martin is the first one that comes to mind. I think he's a genius, uh, just, just brilliant. And, and that dry, understated humor um, that just seems so effortless. Uh, but is very unique to him, uh, I think is fantastic. Uh, uh, the Jerry Seinfeld, Larry David combo is tough to, is tough to beat. Um, I just, I, I, I'm a very big comedy fan. I, I uh, have always loved comedy. And uh, so those are the first ones that comes to mind. Let's see here. Mark asks, in the spirit of election season, have I played Campaign Trail? I have not played can, uh, Campaign Trail. I don't know all that much about it, honestly. I might need to look into that. <laughs> Tony asks, howdy, Mike. What's for lunch today? The same thing that's for lunch almost every day, an apple and a Cliff Bar. There we go. I'm nothing if not consistent. Although there have been a few times lately here in the office where I've forgotten my lunches and I've been forced to improvise and that's never a good thing because my improvisation my improvis wow my improvising i'm going to go with that is never as healthy a choice as what i bring in there okay Cy red eye 22 i'm ready for i'm ready to admit everything here i'm ready to come out as the fraud that i am to the solo gaming community he asks he or she asks as the solar solo or solar, uh, as the solo gamer hero, how do you feel about Mage Knight? I cannot answer that question as I have not played Mage Knight. Yes, it's true. I have just revoked my membership in the solo club. You can take my card away. I've been exposed. Um, I don't know that I even want to play Mage Knight. Um, Everything I've heard about it puts me off, other than it's supposedly a fantastic game. But it just doesn't seem to suit my play style, where it is this incredibly obtuse, incredibly complex, incredibly overwhelming, uh, huge barrier to entry. I even hear that it shows its age and that other games do what it does more streamlined. I get the impression that if I played Mage Knight, and I'm not saying I never would, but I get the impression that if I played it, it would be one of those things where I'd say, okay, I get it, I appreciate the design, I appreciate the importance that it holds within the gaming pantheon, but I gotta tell you, I have a very strong inclination that that game would not be for me. Uh, it just seems long, obtuse, complex, and I don't know that that's really the type of game that I'm drawn to right now. There were other times where I maybe would have been more uh, into it, and I've looked at it a number of times. I've almost picked it up and, and, and played it a number of times. Um, but, you know, I, I rarely play Robinson Crusoe for similar reasons, where it just, that, that barrier to getting it out there on the table and playing it is just so much, and you feel like you have to relearn it every time, and that, that's just not, not something that I generally gravitate towards now. Okay. Makush, can I sing the Love Boat theme? I can. I'm capable. I don't know that I will. Love, exciting and new. Come aboard. We're expecting you. Thank you. All right. Um, let's see here. Hmm. Uh, Zerjik, how do you think artificial intelligence will affect the board game industry in the next 10 to 20 years? For instance, quality of games, balance of games, etc. Wow. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I, I'm assuming maybe that you mean app integration. Um, Boy, I, I don't know. I, I have absolutely no idea. I'm kind of middle of the road when it gets to this app integration question, if that is what you're asking. If not, I apologize. But 
app integration is something that I feel like is is fine. It doesn't. I don't think it signals the end of board gaming, and and you know, I don't throw up my hands and say you know keep it all out. But I do. I do embrace the analog nature of board gaming. It's it's one of the things that I think makes it unique to video games. I mean, clearly, and I like the tactile nature of board games. I like being able to to look at the pieces and hold the pieces. Um, I just don't think that apps necessarily make all of that go away. There are certain games where I think apps really help. I, I mean, Mansions of Madness is a good example of that. I mean, that that app drives that game and makes it so much easier to um, play it without having to administer a lot of the, the, the fiddly bits. So I, I don't know that it's going to make a huge difference one way or the other with quality of games. I think what's going to make a huge difference with quality of games is going to be these amazing game designers that are continuing to innovate and continuing to push themselves and continuing to uh, explore new themes and explore new mechanics and iterate on proven systems that are out there. We live in an amazing time for hobby gaming. They just, they, they, they keep getting better. Now, more games are getting released and there are gonna be mediocre games out there and, and there's this whole kind of idea in board gaming now that, that good is not good enough. You have to really be pushing yourselves because the, the the competition is so much greater, but I don't think that there's anything negative about that at all. Why should we settle for mediocrity? We, we've got so many great games out there and, and so many great designers that are, that are pushing the envelope. Um, if artificial intelligence can help in that, that's great. If it can help with balancing, if it can help with uh, maybe coming up with different models to, to see how a game might work or might not work earlier on in the prototyping process, that's great. I just have no idea. Uh, let's see here. Thank you for the kind words, Tim. What do I think of a Love Boat themed game? I think it would be exciting and new. It would be. As long, uh, as, long as you could play as Isaac, I'm, I'm down. Okay. <laughs> Chris Hahn asks, do you miss your indie game group even though they ran you out of town? Well, uh, I very much miss my indie gaming group. Uh, that is one of the things that I miss about Indianapolis is what a great gaming community. Uh, legitimately, what an amazing gaming community there is in Indianapolis. There's a bunch of fantastic game designers in Indianapolis. There's a bunch of uh, great board game media uh, people in Indianapolis. And there's great game groups. There's great gaming stores. If, if all you know of Indianapolis is Gen Con, that's great in and of itself, right? Because that's a huge boon for that city to, to have uh, the biggest and best gaming, well, I don't know about best, biggest gaming convention in the United States there in, in Indianapolis. But there's so much more uh, gaming-wise there. there. There's a great group of people. And uh, I do miss them, and I hope to see them again soon. Hmm... Andy can talk too. What's one thing you miss from teaching? Well, there will be a lot of things I miss from teaching. I don't, I don't want it to, to just be flippant and trite and, and say uh, the students, but that's probably the answer. Um, I do, there's something about teaching high school. I can't speak to the other uh, levels of teaching. Uh, because I've only, I did a little bit of substitute teaching in, in elementary school before, uh, before I got my permanent teaching job and I did a little bit of, t of substitute teaching in uh, middle school or junior high, depending on where you are in the country. But there's something about high school students where if you, if you can get them onto your side, I feel like you've really accomplished something because they don't give praise easily and they can be very, and I, I, look, I was this way as a, as a teenager too. This is nothing against teenagers by any means, but they can be very skeptical. They can be very cynical, um, but they can also be very open-hearted when they feel like they've got somebody on their side, a teacher who maybe uh, 
shows that they care and understand. And I found that, you know, what you give as a high school teacher can be returned to you a hundredfold uh, just in small gestures because uh, those are the ones that mean a lot. So I do, I do miss the interaction with the, uh, with the kids. Okay. Did you celebrate Dan Hughes and Gary Pope's birthdays recently? I did. I did. One of them legitimately and one not so much. Sorry, Gary. Um, Jose Guerrero asks, so Cal, nice Los Angeles City native here. What part of California did I hail from? I was born in uh, Hollywood, California, at, uh, but I didn't, we never lived. We weren't living in California. Uh, Hollywood at the time. We were living in Griffith, uh, no, in, uh, in Highland Park, sorry. Most of my uh, upbringing was in the San Fernando Valley, uh, Van Nuys, Glendale, and North Hollywood is where uh, I, I went to high school and graduated from high school in, in North Hollywood. So the, the San Fernando Valley region. Chris Thiessen asks, who in the Dice Tower crew do you feel your gaming tastes generally are most similar to? Um, it, probably Z, because we both, I think, kind of like some of the quirkier games. Um, but I feel like, I feel like I probably am maybe the hardest to pin down uh, of, of the group here, uh, although Tom obviously has a huge swath uh, of games that he plays, and, and I think that he oftentimes gets pigeonholed, uh, maybe less than he should be, uh, or more than he should be, I should say. Um, there's a lot of different types of games that, that all of us here like, uh, from what I can tell, but I think that I tend to align most closely with, with Z's tastes. What has been the biggest surprise about what you are now doing with the Dice Tower? Um, I don't know that I had a very good understanding of how things ran here, <laughs> quite honestly, um, because I think until you're doing it, it's hard to know. I think the biggest surprise has been just how actively involved everybody is in almost every part of the channel. Now, clearly there are some things that really are Tom's purview. I mean, the, the, the higher level administrative things that, that only he deals with. But on a kind of nuts and bolts level, how really everybody is involved in almost every aspect of uh, putting together videos and uh, coming up with, with ideas for content and brainstorming different things. And the amount of work that is put in here is it's inspiring really uh, more than anything else uh, and and it it really challenges me to up my game and keep my energy level high uh, as the old man in the group uh, I like to lean into that a little bit um, but man they they really 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 hustle around here and um, there there is I think this impression maybe that there's a lot of sitting around and playing games here at the studio. And that doesn't happen very often, quite honestly. There's just too much to do. It's too busy. So that's been the biggest surprise. Hmm. A call for more four-person top tens. I mean, it was a lot of fun. I certainly w would not mind uh, doing that. Kabuki Kid says Charterstone was probably the weakest of the legacy games. Um, I could see that. Uh, Charterstone was certainly not my favorite uh, Stonemeyer game, but I think it was maybe a little unfairly maligned. Uh, I do think that especially the first few games felt less like a legacy game and more like a tutorial to get to the real game. And I think that that could be a little off-putting to some people. Um, because I would say maybe the first four to five games felt more like slowly introducing rules until you got to what Charterstone really is. That's just my opinion. And so I can understand why that might be uh, off-putting if other people felt the same way. I felt like the, the destination was worth the journey. I liked how quickly it played. I think there, some people in my game group did not like that. They felt like some of those uh, experiences, those specific game, individual game experiences, were so fast that 
they were almost over before they started. Um, and I get that, but I like, I like games that are snappy and quick. Have I ever been to South Africa? Oh, wow. No, that would be amazing, though. Uh, I'm sure it would be amazing. I, I've, I've not been to a whole lot of places. Uh, I haven't traveled as much as I would like. I'm hoping kind of in this uh, part of my life I can get a little more traveling in. I've been, you know, other than the United States, I've been to Canada, and I've been to Mexico, and I've been now to Grand Cayman. I can add that to the list uh, with the cruise. I've been to Jamaica. I've been to the UK, and I think that might be it. I'm hoping to add some more, some more quest or more uh, uh, destinations to that. Must be tough being away from the fam for an extended period. It is. It is tough. Absolutely. Ah, Mark McNair. Oh, maybe I shouldn't. Well, you put it in the you put it in the chat, Mark. So I'm going to assume you're okay with with having your age out there. You get poked for being a bit older than other Dice Crew members as a somewhat veteran. I like that gamer myself, 52. I'm curious to know how old you actually are. I'm 48, and I'll be 49 in July. So not too far away. Wait until August when you talk about weather in Florida. Yes, I know. I know. I know it's coming. Um, I've been in Florida in July, August for Dice Tower, uh, Dice Tower East before, and it is hot and it is humid. That's Orlando, which is a bit more inland. So one of the things I do like about this particular area of Florida is that there does seem to be a breeze, relatively constant breeze, and uh, that can make a huge world of difference. Cameron asks, what's the Italian food like in Florida? I have not uh, explored the Italian food here in Florida very much. I've had pizza a couple of times, um, and I don't know that you can get a really a good sense of that. I don't, I don't see a lot of Italian restaurants around, um, but that's okay. I can actually cook Italian food, although for 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 the time being i'm not doing a whole lot of cooking um and when i cook italian food it is if you've got healthy on this end of the spectrum you've got what i cook for italian food over here on that side of the the spectrum i i yeah i i my my worst tendencies come out when, when i'm cooking italian food palmetto bugs for the win no not no no not for the win uh, it was the size of my forearm, this bug. Michael Hall asks, have you tried Space Explor Explorers solo? Did you enjoy it? Yeah, I, I have, and I did enjoy it quite a bit. I think, I think I did a playthrough video on my solo mode channel for that. I believe I did. Uh, if not, I apologize, but I think I did. I really did like that game. You know, there have been a lot of these quote-unquote splendor killer <laughs> games out there. Um, whether that's you know a legitimate uh, genre or not but if you were going to have a splendor killer to me space explorers would be my uh, my choice for that i i really like that game i think it's flown under the radar would you call that a euro if you would then maybe jumping back to that earlier question that might be one of my favorite space themed euros now thematically it's not there. <laughs> there is no, there really is no theme in that game. Um, but it's good. It's really good. I like the, um, I like the card play in that quite a bit. And the solo uh, version of that is really good. The only bummer to the solo variant in, uh, in Space Explorers is that it doesn't come in the base box. So if you just have the, the base box of, of Space Explorers, you can't play it solo. You need to, to get a little mini expansion. Uh, you might be able to get it from their website, I'm not sure, um, from the publisher's website. If it's the, the game that you're talking about, Michael, I, th I, th I hope it is. Um, oh, Mark brings up Artemis Project. Yeah, that's, that's, see, okay, good. I'm glad you guys are bringing up these space-themed Euros because I keep forgetting them. I also have played uh, Alien Frontiers, but that's, I, I, don't, I don't really, 
I never loved it, and I, I probably would like it even less if I played it now. There's just so many other dice placement games I'd prefer. But Artemis Project is good. That's a really good, tight game. Um, that's one of those games where super interactive feeling. Uh, in Solo, obviously, it's a little bit different. You, know, you still are getting things blocked, so you, you have some sense of that. But, but in a multiplayer version, wow, that's a, that's a tight game and, and interactive and can, can feel a little bit mean for sure. But I like, I like uh, Artemis Project quite a bit um, snow dragon Ka. not sure if it was already asked but what do you look for the most in solo board games themes certain mechanisms winning conditions well you named three biggies right there honestly um, winning conditions is is a big thing um, I'm not gonna say that I just outright dislike beat your score games in solo uh, variants, but it's certainly not my favorite. I think I've become less, I don't wanna say tolerant, that, that's too strong of a word. Um, a game better have something really special now if it's gonna be a, a score variant. Um, I want to kind of add to that though by saying that there are some games that are based off of a score variant that add a little something to it. It doesn't have to be a virtual opponent that you're playing against. Doesn't have to be a bot, but there are games that have a score component and a goal meeting requirement where you have to hit a particular score threshold, but you also have maybe some randomized goals that you have to meet. That can be, can, can be a really satisfying uh, solo experience as well. Uh, Dinosaur Island is one example of that. There are, there are others uh, that, that I do like. But generally speaking, I love having a virtual opponent as long as it's easy to administer. Sometimes solo um, AI bots can be really, really tricky and they completely change the rules of the game or adjust it so much that you don't even really feel like you're you have to learn two complete rule sets that can be a little bit overwhelming uh, so winning conditions play a play a part i'm a sucker for a unique theme um, i think petrichor is is a game that while i like it mechanically quite a bit i love the fact that you're playing as a cloud i don't know why i just think that that's cool and uh, I, I like something that makes me feel like I'm doing something different. And um, so theme helps. Uh, for mechanisms, it's hard to say. I mean, uh, there are certain mechanisms that I certainly like better than others. I, I, I like hand and resource management. I love worker placement. Um, I don't love real-time games. I don't tend to like party games very much, although in a solo game, that, that really doesn't apply. But there are certainly mechanics that I am more drawn to than others. I like... Uh, you know, simultaneous action selection. Again, that doesn't usually apply. You can have solo games with it. Um, Coloma is a good example of that, actually, a game that I really, really liked uh, from, from uh, late last year. And Coloma is a, is a simultaneous action selection game when you're playing multiplayer, but uh, it also has an AI bot that you kind of are, are having to deal with, and, and it keeps that, that mechanic, and I like that quite a bit. Let's see here. Eclipse is crazy awesome. You're crazy, Mike. Yeah, you're probably right. Uh, it's not you, Eclipse. It's me. Okay. Oh, we just jumped ahead here. Here we go. Ooh, I thought we were getting close to not a lot of questions, but man, now we got a bunch. Give me one moment to, to find to find my way back. I'll start going more quickly through some of these. Wow. Thank you for all the questions, everybody. I apologize. I thought that I was close to the end, so I was really taking a long time on those. I'll go more quickly here and try to answer as many as I can. Oh my goodness. Oh, Circadian's First Light, Cameron, yeah. See, there are a lot of space games. That, that's way up there. I love Circadians. I love, 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 love Circadians. Thank you for reminding me of that, Cameron. That's way up on the list. Uh, Ron, I've been out of the loop, uh, but are you full-time with Dice Tower? Also, have you played Atlantic Rising yet? Uh, I am full-time with, with the Dice Tower. Uh, I'm here Monday to Friday, and, and 
uh, living the dream, quite honestly. It, it's been an amazing experience and uh, to, to be able to do this uh, for, for my job is, is incredible. I've not played Atlantis Rising yet. If I could play one game right now, it would be that one. That, that would be a game, if I could say, let's play something right now, it would be that. Uh, Endgame, do I back a lot of Kickstarter projects? I, I have. I've slowed down quite a bit. But, uh, yeah, I would say I'm a regular Kickstarter backer, for sure. Kabuki Kid, do I play a musical instrument? What is my favorite type of music, favorite bands or artists? I don't. Oh, gosh, I wish I did. I'm so envious of people. And that's ridiculous to say because there's nothing preventing me from learning uh, to play a musical instrument other than um, discipline and want to. Uh, but uh, I, I do always appreciate people that can play musical instruments. My favorite type of music is a little bit on the, on the kind of heavier uh, end of the spectrum. Growing up, uh, I, I was really into to punk rock music and I, I still kind of tend to listen to the punk rock industrial end of things. Um, I do think I have a pretty varied taste though. Uh, well, at, at least in a particular age range of, of music. Uh, I tend to still listen to music that was from when I was in my formative years and listen to the bands that are still making new music that were around back then. So, you know, favorite bands are like Killing Joke and the Pixies and uh, a lot of the, the grunge music, the Nirvana and Pearl Jam, uh, The Damned, um, uh, Sugar, Bob Mould, Husker Du, uh, a, lot of, a lot of bands. Uh, I'd, I'd be here all day. And Kenny, Kenny here in the, in, the, in the studio also has some great musical taste. He and I have a lot of uh, things in common. Thoughts on Bunny Kingdom? I think it's a really good game that I get annoyed with the end game scoring. Uh, I, I, wish, I wish that game had different scoring. I'd want to play it a lot more. David Phillips, how many pairs of shoes do you own? I'm not a big shoe guy. I've got a pair of Vans. I've got a pair of Doc Martin boots. I've got another pair of boots that I, I barely wear anymore. And I've got a pair of sandals. That's it. Uh, I'm getting called out for phoning in my list on the podcast. Guilty as charged. I didn't phone it in. Let's be clear. I didn't phone it in. But maybe I didn't spend as much time as I did for this one. Uh... Jose Guerrero asks, was there any hazing going on being new to, at the Dice Tower? The worst is having to buy lunch. No, nothing like that, although there is a fair amount of tomfoolery that goes on around here. Uh, yeah, there's mannequins that end up in strange places that we won't discuss. Um, there's, you know, that air horn, that whole air horn situation. That's pretty indicative of, of the type of things that, that happens around here. Terrier Halo, are you late? I am late. Am I forgiven? You are officially forgiven. Gator Dave, Mike, have you ever had a table flip moment without the actual flip? Um, I'm sure there have been times where I've gotten angry. I'm sure there are. Oh, I can think of one, actually. Um, but it was unreasonable for me to be that angry. Um, and I felt really bad afterwards, and I apologized. Um uh, now, to be clear, I didn't flip out and storm away, but I was salty. I was mad, and I probably let it show too much. It was in the, uh, we were playing Scythe, <laughs> strangely enough. And um, I was playing with a regular group. It was a small group. It was three of us. And uh, one of the group, uh, the first time uh, we played, I played, I think I won, I did pretty well. And, and they, they were pretty new to the game. I think they'd only played it a couple of times. Well, then they got the Steam version of Scythe and played it relentlessly and got really good. And then the next time we played, he crushed me. And I, you know, I happened to be the one that was in the way, and so I just got obliterated. And for some reason, I was like, really? Well, this is, you know, I, you know, why are you picking on me? I mean, just because it's so, so childish and stupid. I felt really bad about it. But yeah, I got, I got, <laughs> I got annoyed. Um, Hazel Wolf, did the cruise feel like a vacation or a nonstop job? No, it was, it was definitely more on the vacation end of things. The job aspect 
was uh, other than some of the logistical things of, of moving around, the, the getting the, the library set up, uh, playing games with people, interacting with people, I mean, that's a joy. Cameron asks, what's a Cliff Bar? It's like a, a meal replacement bar, an energy bar, a protein type bar. Uh, it's like two thirds of my diet. Uh, everyone's making fun of my, uh, my uh, improvis improvisation, whatever word. Do you like, Gary asked, do you like the unlock and or exit series of games? Um, kinda. Sorta, maybe not as much as other people seem to. My issue with Unlock is that um, I feel like so much of it came down to finding small little numbers on those cards. And again, not to not to overemphasize the age thing. Uh, for someone that has never wear, had to wear glasses their whole life growing up, it was one of those things genetically that, that I lucked out on. I, I had great vision my whole life. Never had contacts, never had glasses. The only one in my family. To now, within the last three years or so, feel like I need glasses to see small print, that, that's a little bit of a bummer. I mean, I guess I could just wear glasses, but uh, I have not quite conceded my vanity yet on that. Uh, did you play any new games on the cruise? I did. I played a game called Demon Worker, uh, I think Japanime game uh, that, that Z taught to me, a little worker placement game. That was a lot of fun. I played a prototype that I'm not sure if, if I'm supposed to discuss, so I won't. Uh, but it was a space game and it was really, really good. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie says, Cliff Bar with a dash of mother-in-law's revenge. Let, uh, okay. I want to really be clear with one thing. Nothing I was doing during the filming of that, during our, our rap party, was played up for the camera. That was brutal. That, to me, was so hot. Um, and it lasted so long that uh, I knew that for my own um, <laughs> well-being uh, and for not having to hopefully not have to deal with something for the next few days, that was going to be it for me. That was so hot. All right. Am I looking forward to playing any particular games at Dice Tower West? Uh, Atlantis Rising would be great. I'd love to play that. Uh, there's a game that's in the library, and um, it was there at, on the, uh, at the cruise that I didn't get a chance to play that I'd like to. It's called Pandorum, and it's by Cosmodrome, the people that did uh, Smartphone Inc. and, um, and did uh, Aquatica, which I, I obviously love. I was happy to teach that during the, the rap party. And so it, that's a space-themed game, and it looks like a Euro, so maybe that, Hope Springs Eternal. Maybe that will be my favorite space-themed Euro. Who knows? But I do want to play it. I don't know that it got checked out because I'm not sure anyone has even really heard of it. So if you played Pandorum on the cruise, or if you've played it before, maybe uh, let me know in the comments. I think it was an Essen release. Uh, I don't believe it's available in the States yet. And I, I'm sorry to keep bringing up these games that are tough to get. Um, I didn't play smartphone on the, cru on the uh, cruise. I would have loved to have played that. Uh, I actually love teaching that game, so I just didn't get a chance to. You mentioned on an episode of Sporadically, Andy Herman asks, you've mentioned on an episode of Sporadically Bored that you're a fan of American football. Who's your favorite team? Very uh, coincidentally, it's the Miami Dolphins. I grew up a Dolphins fan, and it's crazy to be within 30 miles or so of the, the home stadium there. Uh, let's see here. I'm afraid I'm going to pronounce this name wrong. Jeroen? I, I hope. Uh, are we not scared that those apps will die out while the board game is still played? No. No. Um, how many games do we play years down the road? I mean, it happens, but if I'm getting a good 10, 12 plays out of a game, that's probably more than 
normal, honestly, at, at least in my play style. I play so many new games. I'm always constantly learning new games that I'm not too freaked out about the app integration going away. Uh, ben McGuire asks, Mike, you will be at the retreat, right? I'm pretty sure. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'll be at the retreat. Mandy and Steven asked, for your solo reviews, do you do more solo-only games or games that can be played solo? Well, there's not that many solo-only games, really. Um, and even the ones that used to be are changing. Like Nemo's War used to be a, a solo-only game, and now they've kind of made that a, uh, where it could be a cooperative game. And all the Oniverse games are technically able to be played uh, two-player, although to me those are all solo games. I'm, I usually do games that have a solo variant um, just because there are so many more of them and they've gotten so much better. Uh, the, the, the quality of solo variants over the last five years has just been exponentially astronomically good. Hmm... Nick uh, Pickle or Pickel, thoughts on Aquatica? Enjoyed the playthrough Friday night, even with all the craziness going on. Yeah, um, that is that's one thing. Obviously, that maybe wasn't the ideal game to to play during a, a, an event like that, where we were doing all the hot sauces and stuff stuff because it kind of you lose a little bit of the flow of the game. And and one of the things that I hope came across is that. It can be a pretty snappy, quick game. I think I probably said that about 15 times, uh, so I apologize if I was uh, overstating. But um, I really like it. I really, really like it. I think it, it, it has a really satisfying... You know, someone was asking about terraforming Mars, and to me one of the most satisfying thing of, things about terraforming Mars is building up this kind of tableau and engine in front of you. And I think Aquatica does that. Uh, at least as well, if not better, and it's quicker. Um, I just, I, it's really good. Now, I will say I think that it's a game that probably will need more to, to keep it fresh. Um, the, the king and queen cards that you get at the beginning will, will slightly change the way you play, but generally speaking, it's, it feels like it's going to be a pretty similar experience every time you play it. Uh, so I, I do hope that, that it's popular enough once it gets released here that they'll release new content for it, kind of like they're doing uh, with smartphone. I'm a valley dude, Kabuki kid, that's right. Oh my God. Okay, sorry, that's a, that's a, yeah, a valley thing. David Phillips, uh, what game would you like to see a solo version of that doesn't already play solo? <sighs> that's really tough because honestly, most games that don't, it's probably because they're not well suited to it. I mean, I know that that's not strictly true, uh, I just can't, for the for the life of me, think of a game off the top of my head. Blue Moon City, maybe, maybe. That would be a tough one though, because again, you're playing off what other people are doing, so eh, that would be tough. I'm not sure. Kabuki Kid, I remember the Moon Zappa song, Valley Girl. I won't sing that one though. I've already sung once, and I will spare you. Uh, Servo386, what's my opinion on underwater cities? I like underwater cities. I think it's, a, it's good, uh, quite good, actually. Um, that is a game that I think, when I played it, I thought, do I need to, I keep, I keep bringing up Terraforming Mars again. That was a game where I was like, do I need to play Terraforming Mars anymore? Uh, this gives me that feeling, and I think I like it a little better. I don't know. But I haven't come back to that here recently. It's been a while since I've played Underwater Cities. There's just so many games. So many games. Makush asks, how was your visit to Canada? There's a good amount of gamers here. Well, it was very brief. They were, they were day trips into Canada and it was just right over the border. So I don't feel like I've gotten any real feel for what the culture of Canada is like. And I, 
I think that that's probably an ignorant statement in and of itself because Canada, I'm sure, is incredibly diverse in its cultures. I should say I'm not very familiar with the cultures, plural, of Canada. I'm sure there are so many, just as there are in the States and in almost any uh, region uh, or country in the world. I don't feel like I've got a good handle uh, other than those stereotypical things that we all like to have fun with with every country, whether it's the United States or Canada or, or whatever the case may be. Um, I'd love to spend a bit more time in Canada so that I can get to know a little bit more about it. We're going to have a very famous Canadian gamer here this week. So um, maybe I'll, I'll pick, pick Rodney's brain about Canada. I'm sure he'd love that. I'm sure he'd love to be the, the, the Canadian ambassador. All right. I think we're almost out of time. I'd love to answer all these questions. Thank you so much. I'm sorry for all the questions I didn't get to. I apologize. Um, but uh, I really do appreciate everyone's questions and everyone's kind, kind words and encouragement since I've been here. Uh, so thank you so much for spending a little bit of time with me. And I hope we get to talk again soon. Goodbye.